Welcome to Hack and Build. This is my DIY DSLR microscope mount, and we're going to see it in action and then take a look at how it's made. While this is specific to my microscope, an Amscope SM3 NTP, the techniques and principles covered in this video could be applied to other models of microscopes. You could even use it to build a primitive lens for your camera. Is it worth it to build one? Why don't you decide? Let's have a look at some footage taken with the microscope mount. This is a $5 bill shot at 7x. You can see there is some distortion and aberration around the edges of the image. The reflection around the sides is the inside of the trinocular port, which is shiny steel. Typically, the mounts are designed to fit inside the port, and there would have been some anodization or some other dark coating to reduce the reflection. I think it's pretty neat that you can clearly see the detail of the engraving marks. You can even make out some of the security fibers that are used to prevent counterfeiting. You may also be wondering why we're getting a circular image and not a square that takes up the entire area. That can be done, as I'll demonstrate later, but we get a smaller chunk of the image projected onto the camera's sensor. I think we've seen plenty of microscope footage, so let's take a look at the build. Here's a closer look at the mount. It's constructed from 3 quarter inch PVC pipe and some fittings. Lenses from Jewelers Loops provide the optics. It attaches to the camera with a lens mount from a set of extension tubes. It costs around $25 to build, and the construction is simple once you've got everything figured out. It did take me quite a bit of trial and error to get everything dialed in. At first I tried heating up the 3 quarter inch pipe so I could fit it over the top of my trinocular port. It worked in so far as I could get it onto the port, but the elongated hole was lopsided. I ground one of the lenses down a bit with some sandpaper so it would fit inside the enlarged pipe. When I finally got everything fitted up, what I got was this. Completely blurry images. I needed to get the light focused on the camera sensor, but how? Thinking back to high school photography, we had created pinhole cameras. The job of the pinhole was to focus the light on the back plane of the camera. I quickly added a piece of tape with a small pinhole on the opposite end of the assembly. Another test, and voila! Slightly less blurry images. About as good as that old pinhole camera from high school. After a fair amount of tinkering with tape and pinholes, I decided I would add a second lens to get the light focused. To accommodate a second lens, I needed to change my design. I used some 3 quarter inch couplers to hold the lenses. The front lens rests on the rib inside the coupler, and the end of the pipe holds it in place. The back lens is right at the end of the 1.5 to 3 quarter inch reducer, and is held in place with an eighth inch or so length of PVC pipe. Placing the lens here allows the full image to be seen with minimal cropping. As the rear lens moves forward, the focal length increases, enlarging the projected image. This behavior can be demonstrated by using a flashlight. Imagine that the beam projected from the flashlight is the image, and the square of paper is your camera's sensor. When the flashlight is close to the paper, a small circle of light is projected. As the flashlight moves backwards, the circle of light grows larger, eventually intersecting the edges of the box, or being cropped by your sensor. Now that we have the design squared away, we can get the build finished up. The lens mount is friction fit onto the 2.5 inch to 1.5 inch reducer by heating it up with a heat gun. That should be pretty good. Yep. You want to do your best to get this aligned with the edge of the coupler. In order to fit the 1.5 inch to 3 quarter inch reducer, you need to cut a small amount off the back. I'd suggest leaving this rib here because that'll allow you to fit the lens right in and it'll hold, the rib will hold the lens in place. When I removed the lenses from the jeweler's loop, I brute forced them out and had some chipping around the edges, so it's probably a good idea to use your heat gun here as well. Once you've got all your different lengths of PVC pipe cut, you'll need to experiment with the sizes of pipes to get everything into focus. I used standard 3 quarter inch couplers in my build, but using these deep socket connectors like this would be a good idea since it would give you a little bit more room for adjusting focus. Once you're happy everything is in focus, you're ready for paint. So disassemble everything and give it a light sand inside and out. Then hit it with your favorite spray paint. To make your life easier when you go to reassemble everything, I suggest masking off the mating surfaces. So that way when you go to reassemble it, chips of paint aren't flaking off and getting all over the inside of your assembly. One way to avoid this would be to use a PVC die. 
The reason I didn't do that is because I would have to special order it and I didn't want to bother with ordering supplies in order to complete the project. So is it worth it to build one? I think so. I really had a lot of fun building this lens mount and I learned a lot along the way too. It's given me a bunch of ideas for new projects I want to try in the future. For instance, I'll probably build a mount for this microscope behind me. And this one has, a, and I, I'll be mounting it to the IP, so I won't need the optics uh, that I have in this mount. I'd also like to try some experimental lenses for photography, uh, mainly for capturing refractographs, these abstract paintings of light. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe for more Hacks and Builds. Next episode, I'll be building a machete from a saw blade and a log. See you next time. Cheers.